Hi, I'm James from Mountain Man Base, and this video is going to teach you a slider down pat job for base jumping. The first thing we need to do is put the whole parachute system onto the floor. Canopy at one end, container at the other end. Either weigh the container down with something or tie off if you can. If you're going to pack on grass, you can always use a ground stake and stake either the laterals down or the leg straps. If you are going to use the leg straps, make sure you've undone them all the way so the container pulls evenly on both sides. Something else a lot of beginners find useful is to get the risers and make sure they're all even using either the slinks or the hard links. Tie them off with a pull-up cord through there or as I've done here, use a small clamp and clamp the risers. This will ensure that the risers keep the same length the whole way through the pack job. Next, we check for line continuity by doing a standard three line check you'll be familiar with from skydiving. Taking the brake lines, rear risers and front risers and running our fingers up the lines, making sure they're not crossed over anywhere. Once there at the canopy, we can give it a little shake and put all the lines in one hand. We can then check all the brake lines are clear. The rear risers are clear and the front risers are clear. Now we turn the canopy 90 degrees. We do this by taking the brake lines and rear risers in one hand and the front risers in the other hand. We then walk up to the canopy, twisting the canopy 90 degrees. Give it a shake left and right and then throw it out in front of us, trying to keep the lines as tight as possible. We're now going to clamp the canopy using these packing tabs. Starting with the tabs that line up with the B lines, count seven tabs following the seams to the inside, ensuring you don't miss any. Once you have all seven, take a clamp, open it up and place it on the material directly in front of the packing tabs. Once this is done, move on to the next set of tabs, which line up with the C lines. Again, count all seven tabs. Once you have them, place the clamp on just like before. Next, move on to the D line packing tabs. Again, ensure you count all seven. If at any point during this process, you can't find a packing tab, move to the previous group and follow the cell along. And often it's just buried underneath or between a couple. Finally, we have to clamp the A-lines. There are no packing tabs here. To do this, fold the whole nose over and start counting cell by cell. Keep the lines as neat as possible. You can do this by placing your fingers inside each cell, either side of the rib and pulling the lines tight. Once you have done all seven cells, find a place on the end of the cell which runs in line with the line attachment points and place the clamp here. Now we have to turn the canopy back to the correct orientation. To do this, we split the canopy into left and right by counting the cells. Beginning with the nose, ensure you have all seven cells. Then count four cells and push these under the canopy to the other side. The remaining three cells stay on this side. Next, place one foot on the A-line clamp to keep tension in the lines. This will be the center of the pack job, so this should line up with the middle of the container. Pick up the canopy from the B-line attachment clamp. Now we're gonna count three cells on either side. Count the three cells on one side, identify the center cell, and then count the three cells on the other side. Placing an arm inside, roughly chop the material out. We're only going to concentrate on one side for now. Whip and flick it until you create this nice rectangular piece of material. Push the air out if you wish. Now place the foot on this B clamp to keep the tension in the lines. Next we do exactly the same with the C clamp. Picking it up once again ensuring we have three cells on one side. Identify the center cell and then count again, one, two, 
three cells on the other side. Again, push your hand in and roughly chop the material. Again, concentrating on this side. We're gonna whip and flick until we get that rectangular shape with the material again. And again, if we want to, we can squeeze out any excess air. Replace your foot and put it on the C-line clamp now, keeping that tension again. And then finally pick up the D-line clamp and repeat the process. So counting three cells, identifying the center cell, counting the other three cells, and then once again, putting your arm inside the canopy and just roughly chopping the material. Once again, just concentrating on one side, whip and flick it, and then get rid of any excess air. Now we need to do the same on the other side of the canopy. To do this, we need to get rid of the tail. Pick up all the brake lines in one hand and throw it to the other side of the canopy to reveal the three panels that we now have to tidy on this side. The three panels on this side are pretty much done. They just need tidying up. To do this, start with the D clamp, hold the tension and find the center of the three cells on the top panel. Give them a whip and flick and leave them on the opposite side. Then continue down to the C line, clamp, hold the tension again, find the center of the three cells on this panel give it a whip and flick and leave it on the other side. And then finally to the B clamp on the bottom. Once this is done, you can neatly flick them all out, removing the air if necessary, and then you've got exactly the same as what you had on the other side. Next, we have to split the tail. To do this, count either four or five control lines, depending on what canopy you have. Keep making your way to the tail pocket, which is in the center, and throw this to the other side. This splits the tail in two. Now we need to dress the inside of the canopy. Start by physically placing a hand between the left and right risers and follow it all the way up to the center of the canopy. This ensures all the lines are on the correct side and no lines have been crossed over. Starting on one side, identify the four A lines. The A lines are the shortest lines on the canopy and will be the ones closest to the ground. Place either a foot or knee on the four lines and then find the four B lines. These are a few inches longer and will all be the same length so they're easy to find. Once you have these, grab the material running from the A-line attachment points. Follow it all the way up to the center of the canopy to take up the tension. Now flake the material between the A and B lines as shown. Once this is done, place the B lines on top of the A lines and then keep your foot on these. Next, grab the C lines. These are again a few inches longer than the B lines, but are all the same length. So once again, it should be easy to find. Same as before, we're gonna follow the material up from the B line attachment points to the center of the canopy and then flake the material between the B and C line groups. Place the C lines under your foot or knee as before. Finally, we do the D lines. These are several inches longer than the C lines, but once again, all the D lines are the same length. Grab the material from the C line attachment point, take the tension to the center and then flake the material between the C and D lines. Place the D lines on top of all the other lines. Repeat on the other side. Identify the four A lines, place a foot or knee on them. Identify the four B lines. Run your hand along the material from the A lines to take the tension and then flake the material between the A and B line groups. Repeat the process with the C lines. Tension material along from the B lines, flake between the B and C line groups and place the C-lines under the foot or knee. Do exactly the same with the D-lines. It's now time to stow the brakes. To begin with, take the toggles off the Velcro and move to the top of the canopy. 
Finding the D line, move along until you come to the first brake line. Keep moving along the tail to the next brake line, ensuring they're not twisted up. Once you're happy, move to the cascade, and from here, run your fingers all the way down the brake line, take any twists out, similar to like you would with a skydive rig. Once you're happy with one side, move on to the next. Place your hands on the D-lines and grab all the brake lines and pull them to the bottom of the canopy. This gives us enough slack to actually stow the brakes without pulling on the rest of the pack job disturbing it. Now we're going to actually stow the brakes. For this particular jump, I've decided to go for the deep brake setting, which is the setting nearest the canopy. I'm going to now remember the sequence LRT, line, ring, toggle. First of all, placing this loop through the line, then through the ring, and then placing toggle through it. Now I'm going to push the toggle into the toggle stow, and then we're going to make the Velcro. Really emphasize pressing this belt cord down just to lessen the chance of a brake fire. Just tug on the brake line just to set the brakes and then turn the rise around and stow the excess. When it comes to sewing the other side, you might find it easier to move around to that side. Um, otherwise, just do it from where you are. The most important thing to remember now is to make sure we get the same brake setting. So again, I'm going for the deep brake setting, which is the nearest one to the canopy. Remembering again, LRT, I've placed the loop through the line and then the ring. And finally, I'll place a toggle through it. Pushing it into the toggle stow. Once again, really pressing that Velcro down hard. Setting the brake and then stowing the excess. Next, we're going to fold the tail. To begin with, take the brake lines in one hand, follow it all the way up the canopy, and then using the other hand, just take out any slack in the pack job. Fold all the loose material over, and then identify the stabilizer. Fold the stabilizer as shown, and make sure that the stitching line here runs parallel with the pack job. Starting at the first line attachment points, we're going to create this 90 degree angle and then make sure that the stitch line again runs straight up the pack job. We're going to keep doing this every time we get either a line attachment point or as seen on this next one, a double stitch line. Once again, just creating these little folds and then teasing all the material, making sure that the stitching runs straight up the pack job. Once we reach the tail pocket, we're at the center of the tail. At this point, we can either move around to the other side of the canopy and do the process again, or as I'm doing here, we can just continue with the folds all the way to the other stabilizer, and then we'll fold it all back across. 
Again, all I'm doing is looking for either a double stitch line or a line attachment point and then teasing the material, keeping that 90 degree fold at the bottom, but making sure that the stitching or the line attachment point runs up to the top of the canopy. As you can see here, I've reached the other side to the stabilizer. So I'm just gonna fold it exactly as I did when I began the other side. So folding it down, making sure the stitch line runs up. I'm then gonna find the center of the tail, which again is the tail pocket, and fold all this material over. Press down, get rid of the air, and then you'll see you've got a nice symmetrically folded tail. We are now gonna do the tailgate. So take the center C lines and the brake lines, which are often all colored red, and walk up the canopy to the top. Make sure you've got no other lines in your hands and take the actual tailgate and wrap it around all the lines. Make sure the center C line that actually has a tailgate going through it is also on the inside of the tailgate. We're then going to take our bungee and double stow it here. Next, we're going to tension the lines and remove the clamps. If you wish, you can tie something around the lines to keep them in place. Here I'm using the bridle. This ensures that I can't leave anything on the pack job, such as a pull-up cord. Starting with the bottom clamp, which is attached to the A-lines, grab the material just in front of the clamp, pull to get the line tension, give it a little shake, and then release the clamp. Then move up to the B-line attachment clamp, then the C, and finally the D. If you use anything to tie around your lines, now is the time to remove it. Next, we're gonna do two small folds at the bottom of the canopy. These are to stop the air rushing into the pack job and promote a nose first inflation. Use two of your clamps now just to hold these folds in place. Lift the tail pocket and grab by these two seams. Pull down halfway to the lines and then pull the tail pocket the remainder of the way down so it's resting just past the bottom of the canopy. Kneel on the tail pocket to hold it in place and then gently tease some of the center cell fabric out. Find all the tail folds and go all the way down to the stabilizer. Wrap the center cell around all the folds all the way to that stabilizer. Do this on both sides. Once this is done, gradually work your way up the center cell, tucking all the fabric in. We're looking to wrap the whole tail around this center cell and make it around the same size as the tail pocket, if not slightly smaller. Starting with one side of the canopy, remove the clamp from the bottom. Fold the entire canopy over into the middle. Remove any air and then place a clamp roughly one third of the way up and two thirds of the way up. Repeat this process for the other side.
Release the container from whichever anchor you used. Sit on the canopy just behind the tail pocket. Take out the primary stow bungee and inspect it and make sure it's still good to use. Next, carefully pick up all the lines. We're now going to take a bite of the lines roughly the size of a fist. Take the primary stow bungee and do two wraps around it. And then place this bite of lines in the primary stow housing. Next, undo all the Velcro on the tail pocket and lay it all out flat. Next, we're gonna stow the lines in a figure of eight using both hands as shown. So first, place a hand on the tail pocket just to keep the tension on the lines that are in the pat job and then start to make the actual figure eight loops. I like to keep one hand still, holding the lines tight and then grab the next length of line pull it over again then keeping that hand still grabbing with the other hand again and so on start with bigger loops and then gradually make them smaller and gradually have them move towards the front of the tail pocket keep doing this until you've only got a couple of inches of line left out before you get to the risers Once you get to this point, place all the Velcro back together again. Be really careful at this point not to trap any of the lines inside the Velcro. We're now ready to place a canopy inside the container. Gently place the risers in line with the container shoulder straps. I like to stand on the risers so I don't disturb the pat job while I sort the container. So open all the flaps fully. Pull out the leg straps and flatten the inside ready to place the canopy down. Now stand both sides of the canopy and we're gonna grab underneath and lift it up into the container. We want our toggles to end up facing inside so you can just give them a little push like this. So grabbing underneath the whole canopy, lifting it all the way so the tail pocket goes to the very bottom of the container. Now we can just lift both sides and just ensure again that the toggles are facing into the canopy. This just stops them being crushed by the outsides, making them harder to grab when the canopy opens. Place one hand on the pat job and make the first fold so that it ends up in line with the top of the container. This fold has now exposed the nose. Dressing the nose is the most important part of the pat job in terms of heading performance, so it's worth taking your time and doing it neatly. Starting on one side, count three cells. Press them down just to get all the air out. Ensure that the seams at the bottom are at the middle and then either fold or as I'm doing here, roll 
the cells towards the outside. So here I've made three rolls and now I'm going to clamp the rolls in place. Leave the centre for now. Most important thing here is to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. So count three cells, press the air out, make my three rolls and then once again clamp them. Now take the center cell and make sure it's pulled out as evenly as possible. Tuck the excess either around the bottom of the whole canopy or as I'm doing here, just tuck it into the center folds. And you know, make sure this is as symmetrical as possible and then once again, clamp it in place. Once you've neatened it up as much as possible, place a hand in line with these bottom clamps and make your second fold. You can now kneel on top of the pat job and hold it in place. Tuck any loose tail fabric out of the way. Place a pull-up cord through the top flap closing loop. I'm going to place a pull up through both the side flaps as per the manufacturer's closing sequence. For a summer it's going to be left and then right. Once the pull up is through all three flaps, we're going to pull the closing loop through, tucking the flaps in place as we go. I'm placing my hand on the canopy to hold it in place while closing the container as evenly as possible. So once the closing loop is through all the grommets, we're gonna identify the correct pin, which is for this one, the closest one to the canopy attachment point. So it's a top pin. And then we're gonna just take that in the orientation that we want it to come out and just push it straight through the loop. Remove the pull-up cord as you would in skydiving. So for this, we want the bridle to come from the canopy out of the middle between the closing loops, going to the top pin, and then finally coming down to this bottom pin. We're gonna close this exactly the same as before. So placing the pull-up cord through the bottom flat closing loop. Routing it the same. So in our case, again, going left and then right. and then placing the bottom pin through the closing loop. So you can see here, I'm gonna ensure that there's no twists in the bridle coming from that top pin. Again, you can see here, it's coming out of the middle, going to the top pin and then going to the bottom pin. Once again, just remove that pull-up cord as before. And just make this little half fold on the loose bit of bridle between the two pins and then tuck the pin protector flap in. Okay, we're nearly there now. So I'm just now gonna tuck my riser covers in. And then before I do anything else, I'm just gonna count my tools to make sure I haven't left a clamp or a pull-up cord or something on the pat job. So I'm gonna look for everything I use in the pat job. So in my case, I used four normal clamps, one small clamp, one pull up cord and then a small piece of line to anchor it down at the start. Once I'm happy there all there, I'm just gonna tidy the rig up. So as you see here, I'm just gonna stand on it. If you've got shoes on, you can kneel on it as well. Doing this just neatens the whole thing up a little bit. Um, we're just gonna now do a final check. So just checking again that I am coming out of the middle, going to that top pin, coming down to the bottom pin. I'm happy there's no twists or anything like that. I'm gonna tuck it away again and then exactly like you would on a sky rig, I'm just gonna tuck the excess in down the side um, and then tuck my pilot chute away. Obviously this jump is gonna be either static line or PCA, so all I'm really interested in at the minute 
is just actually tucking it out of the way. So I'm just gonna fold the bridle in between the mesh part of the pilot chute and then push this into the box ready for when I come to take it out before I jump. And that's it, that completes the slider off pack job. Uh, there's multiple ways of packing, almost every base jumper will pack slightly differently. However, following these steps gives you a really good safe pack job and in time you can tweak it and change it however you see fit. Thanks for watching.